areas of interest are math and astronomy. So, because one of the things that one of our programs is STEM. Yeah. So, there you go. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so as you mentioned, my favorite areas of study are math and astronomy, but specifically astrophysics. Um, and I've been very fortunate as an astronomer to have a very unique um, view of the, our universe and consequently of our, of our Earth. It's small and it's fragile. Um, and I've been privy to that information, but a lot of people don't get, they don't get to see the Earth in the same way that astronomers do. Um, so as a result of this, this knowledge, I started, with the help of some very wonderful people from my high school, um, a little NGO and research group called Objective 350. Um, we focus on getting teenagers involved in climate change education and research. Because, thank you, because um, nothing will happen if this current generation doesn't go into their adulthood, doesn't travel into adulthood with some basic knowledge on what's happening to their world. Um, if you go on our website or you go on our YouTube channel, you'll see that the videos are made by me a lot, but also by um, Emily, by Paige, by Jason and Jack. Um, and none of us, none of us think at least, that we want to be environmental majors, but we, we care about what's happening to our earth. And we want to prove to teenagers and to adults alike that you don't have to be an expert to be passionate or to even be a proponent of, of uh, climate change mitigation. It takes such little time to invest yourself in this study. Um, but it's so rewarding to know what's happening. So one thing that we do, um, as I mentioned, is we have a YouTube channel, a Tumblr, um, a website, a Twitter, um, we might, I don't know, we, we have, we're getting a Snapchat, we as submitted for a Snapchat filter. Um, we, we do any number of things that will push our name out and push climate change out into the public. It's so important. So um, we post videos, at first it was weekly, but now it's um, every other week, usually. Um, and we post, uh, we, make, we make articles, we post blogs on Tumblr, um, and we always invite guest writers, so if anybody's interested, you're welcome to, to, to write for us. Um, but we realize that we can only do so much, and we're working hard to get that done. Um, the issue that we're dealing with is knowledge. It's just basic knowledge on, on climate change, because so many people don't know the basic facts of climate change. They don't know the difference between climate change and climate variability. Um, and there'll often be arguments in, or oh, this has this has decreased in recent years, but uh, there often used to have been arguments about, oh well, it was cold in the you know Boston had its coldest winter of of you know 25 years. Climate change can't be happening. Well, no, <laughs> that's climate variability. Uh, weather patterns can change. People often forget that the Earth is a system, and anything that happens in one place can indeed affect another place on a large scale. So just because it's cold somewhere doesn't mean climate change isn't happening. So um, some of the things that we've done in the past are we've written for Star Talk Radio blog, which absolutely blew my mind because I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> he, he, if anyone doesn't know, Neil deGrasse Tyson is an astrophysicist who has a really cool um, talk show a podcast, uh, but he also has a blog associated with that. And I got in contact with um, their, one of their media directors, Stacy Severn, and she offered me a blog spot, right. which just blew my mind because I really love Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, and re uh, recently, we, we were written about in CT Team Voice, very exciting, and we, I, uh, Objective 350 got a spotlight blog on Scientista magazine, which was so exciting. Scientista is full of amazing professors and, and inspiring uh, young people. Um, so we also have affiliated groups like uh, the CCL, Fairfield's chapter of the CCL, which we adore working with them. They, they are a very, um, they, gen they inspire us to do more because they're fighting on the other end um, with uh, lobbying and climate, uh, politics of, of this issue while we are tackling the knowledge-based portion because nothing will happen 
politically if people don't care about it. Like you said, it all took with six calls to get to, to raise a bell, to for someone to care. Well, those six calls aren't going to happen if people don't know what's going on. Because for every 100 people you tell, like two of them are going to remember. It's hard. It's really hard to get people to remember and to care. But if you, <laughs> I hate to say it, you push it enough, they'll start to listen. So we work with the CCL, and we also recently started working with uh, an organization called Sealit. It's actually a software developed by a kid I met at math camp. He is <laughs> he's, he's a very inspiring young kid. He actually wasn't at the math camp. He was at the research camp, just in the same place. Um, and he developed a software to photo tag seals instead of the normal um, physical tagging, which can be extremely invasive and you know dramatizing to the animal. So he uses what's essentially facial software um, recognition, facial recognition software, to to take pictures of these seals and catalog them. So if a scientist sees a seal at some point and takes a picture, they can say, oh, we've already, we've already seen this one. We know, we know about this one. It's a very novel way of, of interacting with, with the ocean and with, the, with marine life. And even though it doesn't have to do directly with climate change, I think it says something very specific about how we should be treating our world. That everything has merit and has value and you should treat it accordingly. Even seals. So sealage. Um, but they're on our website if you'd like to look us up. If you'd like to look them up. Um, and in the future, we hope to do a couple of things. We want to do research. Um, we'll actually be conducting a study we, um, in association with the Science Honor Society at Fairfield Ludlow about teenagers' perception of climate change. And in the future, we want physical research. That is what we set out to do initially, and that's what we want to conclude with. We want research. Um, we would love to study um, the projected, uh, the projected. I don't know, climate. Uh, do you, are you familiar with uh, climate maps and and um, projections of how climate change will affect the the globe in X number of years, mm -hmm. based off of information that we've gathered over the past 50 years? Um, well, we want to take one of those, preferably NOAA's or the NOAA's. And adapt it to to Fairfield's um, to one of Fairfield's rivers or estuaries, and say, okay, here's what the projected level of CO2 will be in, in 100 years. Let's see if we can simulate that in a smaller environment and see how that will affect marine life and a freshwater deposit. So that's a research that we really really want to do because it hits it hits close to home and it's something manageable that you know a team team group could do that we could also invite other people to um, to work with us on. Because the point is to get teenagers involved. We want to make sure that they know that, again, you don't have to be a scientist or an environmental studies major to, to do this. Um, besides that, we just basically hope to, to bring our, um, our, our little organization to light to bring it to a bigger scale. We're very content working with Fairfield, but you know, we'd like to make it larger and spread out to a greater number of people. Um, so we do. If any of you are interested, we do a couple, we do beach cleanups, um, we do lectures if anyone wants to ever come, <laughs> and we'll be we're going to be applying for another TED talk. So we applied for two in the past, we did not get them. That is okay. Third time the charm. We'll get it next time. Um, but yes, we have flyers over there. If any of you would like to contact us, all the contact information is on that flyer. Um, and thank you for listening. That's all I have to say.